Last week, we spoke about mercy. We spoke about the need for us as believers to develop in our hearts mercy. Mercy towards each other. Mercy towards the creation. Mercy towards the environment. Mercy in all facets of our lives. Because what we see in society today is a society where mercy is becoming lower and lower as a priority. Now I want to continue in that theme. Because having mercy is a trait of good character. Having mercy is a trait of good character. No matter what people say in society now, no matter how language changes, and we, and we admire lack of mercy, the reality is for human beings, being merciful is a trait of good character. So now, the last thing I said was good character. This is incredibly important, so please pay attention. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, I have not been sent except to perfect good character. The mission, one of the purposes that God Almighty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Rasulullah to us, to the universe, is why? To perfect good character. So if the mission was to perfect good character, therefore everything that we do as believers is somehow meant to be linked to the perfection of character. Let's, let's work that out for a second. I have not been sent except to perfect good character. He was sent with not just character traits. He was sent with worship. He was sent with attitudes. He was sent with, uh, with a book for which we recite from. He was sent with so many things. All of those things have to make sure they're linked to the goal of perfecting character. So how do we do that without worship? That's what I want to talk about. We know as Muslims we're expected to perform rituals of worship. We pray, we fast, we give zakat, we perform hajj. Those are the pillars of Islam in terms of our worship. How are they connected to character? And if they're not, maybe we're doing something wrong. Let me explain what that means. Many people will go to prayer. And they'll come out from the prayer and they've stretched the hamstrings and they've stretched the quadriceps and they've gone and said some words in Arabic. But it's had no impact on them. So have they improved their character through prayer? If you haven't improved your character through prayer, how is it connected to the mission of improving character? Now we see the reality is Allah in his wisdom has made all the worship that he's made up incumbent upon us directly connected to improving our character. But we just don't see it. Let me give you an example. Allah says in the Quran, Inna salata tanha anal fashai wal munkri. Verily the prayer, the salat, the, form, the formulaic five times a day prayer in the salata, tanha guards you, protects you. From what? For what is and munkar? Obscenity and evil. So if we're praying properly, there's a connection between our prayer protecting us, guarding us from obscenity and evil. How? Is there a mystical power that you say some words and suddenly you have a, guard, a shield around you? No. It's not like that. When you stand to pray, we are told what? Allah says in the conversation between himself and Moses, establish the prayer for what? For my remembrance. Establish the prayer for my remembrance. What happens when you remember your creator? You remember that there are creation. <coughs> you remember that you are part of creation. You remember that you have moral obligations. You remember that he's watching and going to take you to account for what you've done. That necessitates that if you really are praying properly, it will protect you because you're accountable for what you do between this prayer and the next prayer. So you see how straight away it has an ability to help your character become more upright. It has another benefit. Establish the prayer for my remembrance. Where else? What else do we see about the remembrance of Allah in the Quran? What do we hear? Verily, indeed, in the remembrance of Allah, the hearts find contempt. So when you remember your Lord, your Creator, what happens? Indeed, in the remembrance of Allah, the hearts find contentment, tranquility, serenity. So the prayer has the benefit spiritually of the serenity, the connection with your Creator. Remember, when we're saying that everything has to be connected back to improvement of, of, of our character, remember Allah told us the purpose of our creation. لَقَدْ قَلَّقْنَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنسِ 
illa li yabadun. I did not create mankind and jinn except to worship me alone. And if he created us to worship him, and the Prophet's mission is to improve our character, they have to be linked. They can't be isolated. So straight away we see the link with the prayer. Inna salata tanhana al fashaa wal munkari. Verily, the prayer protects you, guards you from <coughs> evil, obscenity and evil. Listen to this Hadith Qudsi. The Prophet Muhammad ﷺ told us that Allah SWT said, I accept the person, the prayers of a person who adopts the policy of humility with it on my account. On my account of my greatness. He obliges my creation. He does not insist on sinning against me. He spends in his days in remembering me and is kind to the poor, kind to the travelers, kind to the weak and to those who are suffering. <coughs> We're talking about prayer. <coughs> Allah is saying, I accept prayers. Of course, you pray to me. That's what I've asked my creation to do, is to pray to me. I accept the prayer of who? Those who pray with humility. Straight away we see another character trait. We talked last week about mercy. Humility. Another trait that is becoming lower and lower in society is humility. Now we big up Mandem. Mandem is like a big man on town. So we, I think we're, we're, full of, we're full of arrogance instead of humility. I'll translate that for others afterwards who, who are from a different generation. <laughs> you don't have humility. So those who adopt in their prayers a, a concept of humility. And what? Humility on account of my greatness. Obliges my creation. What does it mean to oblige creation? To look after creation. Creation includes the environment, the animals. <coughs> One another, humanity, everything that is encompassed in creation, those who oblige creation, look after creation, and do not insist upon sinning, spend their days remembering me, and is kind to the poor, travelers, weak, and the suffering. These are all traits of character, good character. So the salah has to have that effect. Number one, in the salat tanha'an al wal munkri. If our prayer is not having an effect on our character, it's not doing its job properly. We are not doing this job properly. Number two, of the pillars of Islam, what do we have next? Zakat. We know every one of us who can able is able to afford to do so has to pay zakat. Our compulsory 2.5% of our wealth, excess wealth, needs to go in zakat. How is that connected to character? What happens when you give zakat? First, let's look at the, the Quran. In Surah Tawbah, Allah SWT says, roughly translated, O oh Prophet, take charity from their property so it may clean them and purify them. How does giving my wealth clean me and purify me? What's that got to do with purifying me, cleaning me? What's that got to do with my character? Number one, the most obvious one, <coughs> when you give in charity, it makes you think about other people. It makes you think how blessed you and I are to have what we have. How many people actually are accountable to pay zakat? Only those that have wealth. How many people in this world don't ever have a chance to pay zakat because they're so poor? We have to think about those who have not been as blessed as we are. Not because they're any less worthy. Because Allah says in the Quran, He gives to whom He chooses and He withholds from whom He chooses. So we have an obligation to look after those who have less than us from our pockets. Allah in His mercy gave us a chance to be cleansed and purified by giving our charity to those who are more in need. So the first and most obvious one is it makes you think about other people. But it also has much wider meanings than that. Much wider meanings. It teaches you to not love wealth too much. And the love of wealth, the love of dunya, grips people's hearts and that's what takes them away from good character people will show bad character in the pursuit of dunya the percent pursuit of money the pursuit of wealth the pursuit of the material the materialists consume modern hearts so much that everything else can go to the hell i want to go and get my materialism my money my wealth my houses my cars whatever it may be and i'm willing to stamp on anybody else's face to do so zakat reminds you you need to think about other people. You need to give from your wealth. It has other benefits in a wider sense. That's the zakat, the formal charity. Listen to this, subhanAllah. The words of Rasulullah are so perfect and profound. 
He said in a hadith relating to charity more widely, not just zakat. He said, alayhi salatu wasalam, to smile in the company of your brother is charity. Let's just stop for a second. We think about charity as when the bucket comes around for collection or you see people starving in Syria or Palestine or Rohingya, wherever it may be, dipping in and make a donation. Of course that is charity. This hadith begins, to smile in the company of your brother is charity. Smiling, why? Because when you smile, it makes the other person feel good. And it makes you feel good. And making somebody feel good is an act of charity. So our charity is not just financial. Our charity is in our character. We're making the links between worship and character. So when you give zakat, don't just think I'm giving money and that's the worship over. How is it improving my character? It's making me think about others, number one. To smile in the company of your brother is a charity. To command to do a good deed and to prevent others from doing bad deeds is a charity. Enjoining good, forbidding evil, this is charity. To guide a person to a place where they've gone astray from. Just to have, somebody says, excuse me, can you point me towards Westminster Tube Station? Yes, sure. It's this way. That's a charity. All of these things are character. To remove troublesome things like thorns and obstructions from the road is a charity. If you see a broken bottle on the floor, how many people say, oh God, there's a broken bottle and walk past it? Allah is telling us through Rasulullah our duty as believers is to remove that broken glass from the floor. I want to give people jobs, don't it? Somebody else will clean up after me. No, I'll clean it myself. Why? Because this improves my character. And is an act of worship. So it's not just about giving people jobs or whatever we might use as excuses. We look for opportunities to please our Creator. So removing an obstacle from the road, from the thoroughfare, from the path, that's an act of charity. To pour water from your jug into the jug of your brother is an act of charity. And to guide a person whose vision is poor is an act of charity. All of those things, no one can disagree, are traits of good character. Good character people would clear the road. Good character people would help people who are lost. Good character people would give God directions. So these are things we strive for in our worship to improve our character. Let's continue. Fasting. We've gone through prayer. We've gone through zakat. What about fasting? How does the fasting, the psalm, the fasting of Ramadan, how does that improve my character? We know, as we hear every year when it comes to Ramadan, Rasulullah taught us that fasting, Allah is not in need of your hunger and your thirst. Allah is not in need of your hunger and your thirst unless you give up speaking ill and actions that are ill. We'll translate it better as Ill, uh, evil actions and evil words. So if we don't give up evil actions and evil words, Allah is not in need of our hunger and our thirst. So when we're fasting, all well and good, going hungry, going thirsty. But if your character sucks, if your speech is bad, if your actions are bad, now we're not in a position where our character is, been, is, is being improved. So we're not making the connection between our fasting and our character. Do we see a theme running through? Com and all we're talking about, brothers and sisters, is the compulsory acts of worship. Prayer, fasting, uh, zakat, hajj. We're not even going wider into our uh, supererogatory, optional ibadah. Just this is for the compulsory. When we go to the Ramadan, which will come in a couple of months' time, April 24th, and the Ramadan will be upon us. <coughs> Do we go in thinking, this has to improve my character? It teaches me restraint. It teaches me patience. It teaches me empathy. Every year we say the same thing. How many of us in reality know what hunger is. In fact, most of us are having to do the opposite. We're having to try to make ourselves hungry to lose weight. But the reality of our ummah, this world that we live in, is there are millions and millions of people, millions of people, who don't know if they will eat today. Every one of us, alhamdulillah, thumma alhamdulillah, every one of us will go to lunch and think, what will we eat today? Every one of us will go home and think, what will we feed our children? Because our children are fussy. We have to decide what we're going to feed them. Are we going to feed them this? Are we going to feed them that? I doubt any of us in this room, alhamdulillah, thumma alhamdulillah, I doubt any of us in this room have ever had to think, if I will feed my children. And yet there are millions and millions of our brothers and sisters in Islam and our brothers and sisters in humanity 
around this globe wondering if they will feed their children. Ramadan is the only time when we're fasting that that character trait of true empathy, we can get a glimpse of it for a moment. A glimpse, and it is just a glimpse. At the end of an 18-hour fast, when we've been hungry and thirsty, just for a moment, maybe that last half an hour before the iftar, you can smell the biryani coming, you can smell the samosas fried, whatever it may be you're going to eat. At that moment, you might be truly hungry. But you know there's something coming. You and I know there is a meal coming at the end of it. How many people don't know if that meal is coming? That's how it teaches us to improve our character. And finally, Hajj. Hajj combines all of those things. Hajj makes you sacrifice wealth. Hajj makes you sacrifice time. Hajj makes you sacrifice <coughs> energy and effort to get for the Hajj. When you get there, you need to show mercy to everybody around you because there's four other million people stood next to you. It teaches you we are one human family. When you go for Hajj and you see people from every single color, creed, language, country, we are one human family. No country on this earth is not represented at Hajj. It's one of the true places that you will see the whole of humanity gathered in one place. For what? For the same purpose, to do the same thing. To worship the same Lord that created all of us. And when you see that, it reminds you and I that we are part of this human family. And that has no option inside you except to improve your character. Because it wipes away something very important. It wipes away arrogance. Whether you're a prince or a pauper, whether you're a king or a, or a road sweeper, whether you're a goat herder or, or a diplomat. On Hajj, everybody wears the ihram. You can't wear a designer ihram. Even if you wore an Armani ihram, I don't know why you'd want to, but even if you did, nobody would know it's Armani, because it just looks like two white sheets. It levels all of humanity to a lowest common denominator, which is human being. No status, no ability to be arrogant. Because when you're in those two white sheets standing on the plain of Arafah, no one can be better, no one can be over, because the views, the eyes that we see better through are dunya eyes, worldly eyes. We give status according to wealth, we give status according to power, we give status according to uh, degrees, we give status according to grade. What a fantastic one grade is. In our, in our organization, we look at grades and say, oh, so-and-so is a grade, such and such, he must be better than me. They're not, believe me. <coughs> Don't take that outside this room. <laughs> But what that does is it levels us all back to a level of humility. That we're all just human beings. And we're all the same. And we're wearing the same clothes, doing the same thing in the same place. And it reminds us that our character has to reflect the human family that we're all part of. Hajj combines all those elements to improve our character. So the next time we're committing an act of worship, the next time we're, we're wanting to, to turn our face to Allah in prayer or fasting or hajj in zakat or whatever it may be that we do. I said, these are just the fun, the compulsory. What about the supererogatory? Let's make that connection. Let's make the connection between I have not created a mankind, the jinn, except to worship me alone. And Rasul is saying, I have not been sent except to perfect good character. Our worship must improve our character. Akuli kauli hada wa staffar al adim li wa lakum fa staffar inna kuhul kafur rahim. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashtub al-mursaleen Khatam al-anbiya wa rahmatu lil alameen Sayyidna wa habibana wa shiriyana wa maulana Muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een Amma bad Time is very short so I just want to bring one or two more things relating to this So they are all reminded about how important it is That we start to work on our characters Our Rasulullah said for example about belief Belief we often take things like belief for granted, as though the fact that we just say we believe that's enough to be counted as a mu'min. Not a Muslim, a mu'min, a believer. <coughs> Rasulullah said, modesty and faith. Modesty and belief. 
are twins. One who gives up one loses the other. Modesty. He's giving us a character trait that we need to <coughs> make sure we're developing in ourselves. Modesty. Why? Because he connected it to faith. You can't be a person of faith if you are immodest, arrogant. You have to be a person of haya, modesty, humility. Another hadith, Rasulullah said something which for me is so profound. By Allah, he cannot be a believer. By Allah, he cannot be a believer. By Allah, he cannot be a believer. The companion said, who? Three times he's saying this person can't be a believer. They're worried. Oh, Messenger of Allah, who is it that cannot be a believer? He said, the one from whose misdeeds his neighbor is not safe. You can't call yourself a believer if your neighbor is not safe from your misdeeds. What does that mean? In Islam, a neighbor is up to, according to some ulema, up to 30 or 50 houses either side of you. Not just the person next to you. We don't even know our neighbors, especially those of us who live in London. We, we avoid neighbors. Other parts of the country, people talk to each other. In London, we avoid neighbors. Your neighbor has to be safe from you. From what? Antisocial behavior, parking in their space, putting bins out, whatever it may be. You know your neighbor, I don't. Are our neighbors safe from our misdeeds? If they're not, you can't be a believer. SubhanAllah, even neighbors. Rasulullah is painting a picture of character for us. He talked to them, and again, time doesn't allow. He talked about mercy to animals, kindness to neighbors. At one point, Sahaba were so worried they thought camels would have more rights than human beings because the amount he talked about mercy towards the animals and feeding the camels and watering them and all of these things. Our character hasn't just got to be with those we love. Our dawah isn't just to those we want to give dawah to. All of these things are for all of creation. We need to remember these things. Another one, just as well, while we have one or two minutes. Rasulullah said that hadith found in Sahih Bukhari. A person who believes in Allah and the hereafter should only speak good or remain silent. Imagine, imagine in today's world if people only spoke good or remain silent. What a world would we live in? How much fitna, how much tribulation, how much facade is being caused just by words. Words can lead countries to war. Words can leave human beings lead human beings, like you and I, to war with one another. I don't mean globally, I mean even personally. Words can cause heartache, words can cause pain. Imagine if we just spoke good or remain silent. And I conclude with the words of Rasulullah about poverty. He spoke about poverty, the poor person. He said about describing to us who the poor person is. He didn't say the poor person is the one who doesn't have money. He didn't say the poor person is the one who doesn't have wealth. What did he say? He said this. <coughs> in my ummah, the poor person is the man who would appear on his day of judgment in front of his Lord and he would have prayed and he would have paid the zakat and he would have observed the fasting. <coughs> but, let's just pause for a second. This person arrives having lived a life which he thinks is a life of piety. Why? Because he's prayed and he's fasted, and he's given zakat. But, why is there a but? Hang on, this guy's been praying and fasting and giving zakat. Where's the but coming from? Let's continue. But he would have abused somebody. He would have falsely accused somebody. He would have, unauthor without authorization, taken somebody else's property. He would have murdered somebody. He would have hit somebody. For this person, all of his virtues will be given to his victims. And if his virtues are finished before they've all been given to his victims, their evil deeds will be given to him. Frightening. You might think you're doing good. You might think you're on the right path. You might think everything's good, I'm praying, I'm fasting, I'm doing all of those things. But look at the list he gave us. How comprehensive is that list? Abuse, murder, hitting taking somebody's property, all the things you would regard as munkar, evil. <coughs> the Prophet has given it as in one sentence. You can wipe out all these good deeds that we think we're doing by not having a good character. 